Hello, hello Maricopa County residents. Welcome to installment number three of Maricopa County Talks Property. And today we're going to be talking about title exemptions and Maricopa Title Alert. I'm Stephen Richer, your Maricopa County recorder, and I am here with Eddie Cook, your Maricopa County assessor. We're going to give it just another minute while people come on in. We've got a few hundred people already listening so far. And again, welcome to our third installment of Maricopa, Maricopa County Talks Property. We're going to be talking about Maricopa Title Alert as well as some exemptions. Please remember throughout this call, you can press zero to ask your questions. We will be taking live calls in just a little bit. It's press zero if you have a question and want to speak with us. Okay, to kick things off, we're going to have a little interactive session, and we're going to ask you to please participate in our engagement poll. So this is going to be real simple. You're just going to listen to the four prompts, and then you're going to press one of the buttons. Please press one if you've ever recorded a document with the recorder's office. So one if you've recorded a document with the recorder's office. Please press 2 if you want to learn more about recording public documents like liens and deeds. Please press 3 if you've ever participated in an exemption program with the assessor's office. So 3 if you've participated in an exemption program already. And lastly, 4 if you want to learn more about the assessor's exemption programs. So 4 for learning more about the exemptions programs. We'll let those answers file in, and we'll read off the results in just a little bit. But again, remember, please press zero if you have a question for Assessor Eddie Cook or me, Maricopa County Recorder Stephen Richer, regarding the property programs that we are talking about today. All right, I'm going to get things going with just a little overview of one of the systems that my office rolled out about a year ago that already has over 70,000 subscribers, and that is Maricopa Title Alert. You can sign up for Maricopa Title Alert in under two minutes by going to titlealert.maricopa.gov. And what this program does is it allows you to monitor your title status. So this has been in the news a lot lately. A lot of people have been concerned, what, how do I know or how do I prevent somebody from unlawfully conveying deed to my property without my knowledge? And Maricopa Title Alert is allowed, allows you, the property owner, to protect against that. So all you have to do is you go to titlealert.maricopa.gov, you enter the names that you want the service to monitor. So that could be your name, that could be the name of an LLC, that could be name of a family trust. And you enter that into the system, and then any time that somebody records a document in all of Maricopa County with that name in the index, you will automatically receive an alert that will link to that document. We'll send that alert to either your cell phone, if you've provided your text message number, or we'll email you a link to that document if you've provided us with your email. So that is a brief overview of the Maricopa Title Alert System. Again, we have over 70,000 users since creating it just one year ago, something that we're proud of, and we, it's something that hopefully gives you peace of mind. Now, before I turn things over to Assessor Eddie Cook to talk about title, excuse me, property exemptions, I just want to remind you that you can press zero at any time during this call to ask a question, and we'll be taking live questions here in just a minute after Assessor Eddie Cook talks to you about property exemptions. Well, thank you, Stephen. Hi, this is Marshall County Assessor Eddie Cook. The last time we were together, we talked about senior valuation freezes, but today we're going to be talking about another uh, service that the county assessor offers provides related to personal exemptions. Personal exemptions are offered to eligible widows, widowers, total disabled residents, or disabled veterans with an honorable discharge. The purpose of this uh, personal exemption is that um, it's related to reducing your assessed limited property, your LPV, which is the taxable amount that's due on one's property. And there is a bucket of money that's just north of $4,000 that can be used to reduce 
your limited property value, which in theory will reduce your property taxes. And I know many folks would love to have lower property taxes, especially those folks that are eligible, widow, widowers, those individuals with total disabilities and uh, disabled veterans with an honorable discharge. So with that, uh, back to you, Steve. And where do they go to learn more about that exemption? Thank you. So they can go to the Maricopa County uh, Assessor website, which is mcassessor.maricopa.gov. Okay, mcassessor.maricopa.gov, and that's for widowers, that's for veterans with the dishonorable discharge. Do they have to have anything else in place? Yeah, and we could talk more about okay. those uh, requirements a little later. Okay, but before we do that, we'll remind you that you can press zero to ask your questions about these programs or any other programs relating to property with the recorder and the assessor. And are we ready to start taking some questions? Okay, we're going to jump to the question session. Again, please press zero if you have questions. We are live with Assessor Eddie Cook, and I'm recorder Stephen Richard. Let's see who our first question is. Our first question comes from, is it Daniel or is it Lisa? It's Lisa. All right, Lisa, you're live with Eddie and Stephen. Welcome aboard. Hi. Uh, I was wondering, one of your kiosks is pretty close to me. If I end up using it, what exactly do I need to bring with me? Thank you for the question, Lisa. We appreciate that. We have recently opened three remote recording kiosks. And what these kiosks allow you to do is recreate the front counter experience that we have in downtown Phoenix without having to come all the way to downtown Phoenix. So we have a recording kiosk in Goodyear, we have one in Gilbert, and we have one in Sun City. All you have to do is bring the document that you want to record as well as a form of payment. It is $30 per recording. When you get up to the kiosk, you will be connected over video to a customer service representative and he or she will walk you through the process. This is just the same as recording a document at our front counter or if you record it digitally. It will get re it recorded the same day and it will be entered into the record such that then you can show proof of title. So thank you very much. We really appreciate that. We've had these open now for a few months and we've already received several hundred recordings at these various kiosks. All right, what's our next question? Let's see, we've got a question from Daniel reg re regarding a signed certified copy. Daniel, you're live with Assessor Eddie Cook and Recorder Stephen Richer. Yes, so Mr. Cook, how do I go about getting a copy, a signed copy, a certified, a signed certified copy of the assessment of my property? Um, I know that our office does not do like certified uh, documents of your property. Could you give me a little bit more? contents of why you need that because I'm curious to see how it's valued you okay. know comparison okay. approach the sales approach the income approach all right so what I can so what I can do for you Daniel is that if you could go to our website which is MC assessor Dot maricopa dot gov and then you can input either your address or you can input the parcel number onto our website and that will lead you to a lot of detail about your property and in there you can actually see the last like five years of historical data related to your uh, assessment of your property and then, Daniel, I will also say that if you want a certified copy of your deed that has been recorded, you can call my office, the recorder's office, at 602-506-3535. That's 602-506-3535 to get a certified copy of a recorded document. But again, to, to check the assessment value of your property, you're going to want to go to mcassessor.com 
www.maricopa.gov and you can see all the information about how your property was assessed in addition to the postcard that goes out every February. Is that right, Evan? Yeah, my, my Valentine's card that I send out every February. Every February that has details on the assessed value of your property. This is a reminder to press zero if you have a live question, if you have a question you want to ask live, I'm here with Assessor Eddie Cook, and this is Recorder Stephen Richer. We're now going to take another question live from Sandra. All right, Sandra, you have a question regarding, it looks like, Maricopa title alert. Well, yes, and I want to know if, it, if it's an appropriate program since our house is in the name of our trust. Great question. Sandra's question was, how do I monitor my title status on Maricopa Title Alert if we are holding property in trust, as many do? You can use Maricopa Title Alert. All you have to do is enter the name of the trust in the name field when you go to Maricopa or excuse me, titlealert.maricopa.gov and you can enter the name of the trust. So that is something you can absolutely monitor and is an important feature that I'm proud of in this system. So thank you very much, Sandra. We appreciate it. All right. We've got live questions coming in. Please press zero if you have a question and would like to ask it live. I'm Stephen Richer. I'm your Maricopa County Recorder. I'm here with Assessor Eddie Cook, and we are talking about exemptions. We're talking about property Free, excuse me, property tax limitation value limitations, <laughs> and we're talking about Maricopa Title Alert. You can tell what I am not in charge of, and that is regarding the assessed values. Okay, press zero if you want to ask a question. Next, we are going to hear from Connie. Connie, you're live with Assessor Eddie Cook and Stephen Richard. Connie, do is we that have you? addressed to me? Yes. Yes, yes. ma'am. Yes, you're live. Okay, my my question, it's a combined comment and question. I am under a, a based on low income. My uh, property tax is assessed differently based on a low income. And my question now would be, or comment would be, you did not include that when you opened up this program. And I would think that not many, based on my friends that I have re, uh, uh, mentioned that I have low-income property tax assessments, that not too many people are aware of that criteria. And so my question was based on um, and comment was that you did not include that. And well, is it still the same? Well, thank you, Connie. This is Maricopa County Assessor Eddie Cook. I believe you're referring to the Senior Valuation Protection Plan. Is that what you're referring to, where the county assessor's office can freeze the valuation of your property due to your income? Yes, exactly. Okay. So... Um, the way the program works is that you, as a um, individual that owns the home, you can, uh, the program works based upon the adjusted gross that you file with your state income tax or your federal income tax. And the limits are based upon if you're a single owner, it's around $45,000, and if you are multiple owners, it's about $56,000. So that's the upper limit. If your adjusted gross income is below those two numbers, then and if you're the age of 65 or older, and if you've lived in your home for two years, then you can apply to our office for that senior valuation protection plan, which will allow my office to freeze the limited property value for three years, and then you can renew it again after three years. So, Connie, I apologize. We didn't talk about that at the beginning because we were instead focusing on a different type of exemption that Assessor Eddie Cook's office offers. 
but we are also able to take any questions that you have regarding assessed value freezes. And as you heard, Eddie Cook just talked about one of them, which is the Senior Valuation Protection Program. So if you have any questions on that or any questions relating to property or to Maricopa Title Alert or to exemptions, please press zero now and you can ask your question live with Assessor Eddie Cook and me. I'm recorder Stephen Richer. All right. We are next going to go to Lois. Lois, you're live, and we would love your question regarding your property needs. When I paid off my mortgage, the company, the mortgage company never sent me a copy of my property deed, and I would like to know how do I get a copy of my property deed. Well, we can take care of that very quickly. All you need to do is call 602-506-506. 3535, and we can get you a certified copy for a very small fee, or you can go online to recorder.maricopa.gov. That's recorder.maricopa.gov, and you can pull up the deed, you can pull up the recorded deed on our website, and you can request a certified copy through our newly redesigned website. So we definitely want to get that to you, and please give us a call, and please let us know if there's anything else that we can help you with. All right. All right. Again, please press zero if you have a question regarding property exemptions, assessed valuation freezes, Maricopa title alert, or anything else pertaining to property that is a question for Assessor Eddie Cook or me, I'm recorder Stephen Richer. All right, we've got Glenn. Glenn, you're live, and you have a question regarding Senior Valuation Protection Program. I've got Assessor Eddie Cook here for you. Okay. Fire away. What's your question, Glenn? Oh, I wanted to know if there's a service available for an old gentleman who can't write anymore and is computer illiterate that can help me uh, file for this senior discount or senior freeze. Well, Glenn, hi. This is Maricopa County Assessor Eddie Cook. And absolutely, my office is very friendly to all property owners, and we would be glad to help you achieve your goals. So what you could do is you can call our office at 602-506-3406, and one of our team members will be glad to help you through that process. What was that number? 3406? So it's 602-506-3406. Okay, fine. Okay, great. We would love to be able to help you, Glenn. And so you can call the assessor's office, and we got that number out there. And anyone else who is interested in signing up for the Senior Valuation Protection Program or knowing what the qualifications are but does not feel like going online to the assessor's website, you too can call that number and get more information to see if you qualify. All right, please press zero if you have a question. We're still taking live questions. I'm still here. I'm Stephen Richer. I'm the Maricopa County Recorder, and I'm here talking property with Assessor Eddie Cook. All right, our next question up is from Don. Don, it looks like you've got a question about changing the home, the ownership of a home. Is that right? Correct. It is the title, the deed of the property is in my mother's name and my stepfather's name. My stepmother passed away in 2018, and my stepmother hasn't done anything else, anything with it since she passed away, and he wants to leave the house to me and his daughter. Okay, so uh, unfortunately on this one, Don, I'm going to have to refer you to your legal counsel or to your accountant, somebody who can advise you on how to, um, let's see, properly, both legally and strategically in terms of taxes, convey property to however you want to go, but you will record that conveyance with my office when the appropriate time does come. And so to do that, you can either come and visit us in downtown Phoenix, or you can go to one of our three remote recording kiosks, 
or you can go online, or you can mail it to us. But if we can help you with this process at all, please give us a call at 602-506-3535. Again, 602-506-3535. And it sounds like you'll need to record a conveyance of your deed in, to to new ownership, and so I, I. But like I said, I'd recommend you reach out to your attorney or your tax counsel and make sure that you get everything 100% square away. And that's important because we have individuals uh, here in Maricopa County where there's some illegal activity related to a transfer of property. So having that those documents done by a professional and then record it in your office, then once that's recorded, it comes to my office and we can actually change the ownership within the assessor's office. All right, well please press zero if you have a question for Assessor Eddie Cook and me, I'm recorder Stephen Richer, we're having fun, we're talking property, we're talking exemptions, we're talking Maricopa title alert, we're talking Diamondbacks baseball, except for not so much anymore after yesterday, but if you have any questions relating to any of those topics, please press zero and come on in. All right, we have a question regarding title alert from Rochelle. Rochelle, you're live with Assessor Eddie Cook and me, Stephen Richer. Hi, guys. I have a couple of properties in a trust, so the title is the same. On the title alert policy you have, can I register just one property, or if I write register the name, does that apply to everything in that name? Rochelle, great question. You can put in as many names as you want to monitor. So if you have a whole bunch of different trusts, you can have them all be monitored and then anytime anything is recorded relating to any of those names, you will receive an email, if you choose email option, linking to the document that will be sent to your email account. Cool. To make sure I understand, with two properties and the same owner, you will alert me if either one of them has anything going on with the title, right? That's right, and that's just because we search for all index names, and then if the index name is the name that you requested, or the names you requested, then we will send an email linking to the relevant document. Wonderful service. Thank you so much. All right, we appreciate it. Thank you, Rochelle. Okay, questions. Press zero if you have a question, and you'll be chatting live with Stephen Richer, me, and Assessor Eddie Cook. Looks like we've got a question for the assessor regarding uh, real property put in trust from Charles. Charles, are you with us? Do we have Charles on the line? This is John. All right, John, do you have a question regarding uh, regarding real property? Yeah, I do for Mr. Cook. If, okay. If you have a property in the trust, can you still get the exemption from being a disabled veteran, or does it just have to be, does his name along with the spouse both have to be on there without the trust? You are good to go. It could be an individual name, it could be a trust, it could be an LLC, and you're good to go. So please move forward and go ahead and apply for that exemption. You can do that at our website at mcassessor.maricopa.gov, or you can call my office at 602 506 Three four zero six, and one of my team members will be glad to help you through that. Okay, and also, Mr. Richard, I want to thank you for the job you've done in your position, and I hope you wish you could have hung around. I would have voted for you. I couldn't vote for you in the primary, but thank you for the job you did. Well, we we appreciate it, and though we got your name wrong, we hopefully got you some good answers, and we appreciate the kindness, and hopefully you can get in touch with the assessor's office and see about that a exemption service for veterans, and we both, Eddie and I both, thank you for your service. Yeah, thank so you your Thank service. you very much, yeah. John. All right, next up, well, we're, we're fielding the queue a little bit right now, but if you have a question, 
please press zero. And if you want to chat property with Assessor Eddie Cook and me, I'm Stephen Richer. We're taking questions live right now regarding property. All right, we've got a question from Carl. Carl, do you have a question? Yes, my question is, uh, when my parents died, we retitled their house. And in the process, the the uh, what shows up on the website for the uh, the recording includes their death certificate, and we've had our attorney contact her office to try to have the death certificates removed from public view, and they didn't get anywhere. And I've written letters to your office to have the death certificates removed from public view, and I've had no response. So how do we get? death certificates from being shown for public view? Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to get you a little better customer service. So I am apologize for that, and I will ensure you that we get in touch with you. So if you could call 602-506-3535 and tell him you spoke today with recorder Stephen Richer and you want an email from him, then I will absolutely get in touch. Now, ordinarily, it takes a judicial order in order to be able to go back and redact something, but we're happy to take a second look at this, and I certainly at least owe you an email, so I'd appreciate it if you do that. Actually, we even have your information on file from you calling into this, and so we will be in touch with you, Carl, so you don't have to do anything. We'll be in touch with you, and we'll make sure that we get you an answer regarding this particular desired redaction and again apologies for any delay in service all right if you have a question please press zero we've got a question coming in from Cindy Cindy you have a question hi yes I was just wondering like like the lady who asked if she has multiple properties will each of them show up in that title alert should anyone, you know, try to do anything with any of her properties without her knowing? My question is about um, someone's legal name versus their nickname. When I received the email about signing up for this, I went ahead and I put in my full legal name, first name, middle name, last name, and then in the lines below, I went ahead and put my nickname and my middle initial, and then just my nickname, and then just my full first name. Did I do that right? I think you did it absolutely right. So great question regarding Maricopa Title Alert. You can sign up as Cindy did by going to titlealert.maricopa.gov. And if there's any confusion over which name you might use or what might be titled in, in, a, in a recorded document, what might be indexed in a recorded document, then I recommend you do exactly as Cindy did, which is just enter all of them. So for me, if it's Stephen Isidore Richer, or if it's Stephen I. Richer, or Stephen Richer, or Steve Richer, you can put in all of those, and then anytime any one of those has a document indexed against it, we'll send you an alert with a link to the document, and you can check it out. Did you have more something to add on so that? So, Stephen, let me ask you a question about this. So, is, is the indexing and the searching only for property, or could it be other documents that get recorded in your office? Great question, and I apologize for anyone that I misled. This is for everything that is recorded. So this could pertain to a lien or some or the like, not just a deed. Good thing I have my teammate here, Assessor Eddie Cook, to set me straight. All right. Do we have any more questions? Remember, you can press zero at any time, and we're going to take just a few more questions because... We're because, out of time. We, because we're running out of time, yeah. and you know we we got to get back to recording documents and, and assessing, assessing value. Yeah. All right, so we've got a question from Louis or Lewis for the assessor. Yes, yes. Thanks for taking my call. I wonder if there's anything in the making that's going to reduce the assessed value or 15 percent of the assessed value on raw land to something comparable to homes, which are at 10 percent. I think land should actually even be lower. Land doesn't generate anything except expenses on property tax and clearing the weeds. So this is land that is undeveloped, right? Undeveloped. Um, so which part of Maricopa do you live in? Well, I live in Gilbert, but I've got property in Queen Creek, and I've got property in raw land in Gilbert and raw land in Queen Creek. Okay. Well, this is what we call you need a legislature to actually work on some legislative language 
that would actually take your wonderful idea and that they would have to run the bill to make that adjustment. Because right now, this is uh, a value that's locked into our current state statute and it will require our legislators to actually make that kind of a change. And since you live in the Gilbert and uh, Queen Creek area, you will be part of L Legislative District 14 or Legislative District 15. Uh, I do know those uh, legislators out there, and they would be very open to chatting with you. Is it so this even possible to think about that? Because I know it was at 16% a few years ago. They dropped it to 15, but you don't hear anything about it being lowered. Is it even something that's considered? It, it Again, it depends on the uh, legislature and who uh, creates the, the new bill, and it depends on the, you know, the, 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 the House and the Senate, and if they can come to a, an agreement that this is a great idea, they can get it through both chambers and then off to the governor for a signature. So forgive me, I'm maybe a bit of an ignoramus on this, but uh, this property that is undeveloped is taxed at a higher rate than property on which, yeah, so, which has a house? So basically, uh, here in the state of Arizona, there are nine classes of property and each class has what's called an assess ratio. And that assess ratio is different. So like for homes, uh, residential is at 10%. When you have like vacant land is at 15%. Okay. So they basically, those ratios are applied to the limited property value. And then that's where the property tax rates are then applied to that number and that's how you get your property. But those tax classifications are set by the state legislature. Yes. So if we wanted to do what our good caller from Gilbert and Queen Creek wanted yeah. to do, it would require a legislative change. Right. And I think I think from our last caller, um, the commercial properties have been the ones that have been decreasing over time. So maybe the caller was a little confused because vacant prop properties with this assessed ratio has been like that for a long time. But for commercial, it's been dropping. And maybe he was referring to would vacant property follow the same kind of path as commercial. But that would have to be done by the legislature. Okay, so as you can tell, we have a bit of a confusing property tax code. So if you ever have questions about that, you are by no means the only one. I'm sitting here struggling through it, but I'm getting some good information from Assessor Eddie Cook. So if you ever have questions, feel free to give the assessor's office a call. If you have things that you would like to see changed in our state law, then of course we encourage you to reach out to your respective state legislators. All right, I think we have time for either one or two more questions. Is it just one more question? Oh, two, two more questions. Right. All right, we've got a question regarding title alert from Denise. Denise, you're live with Assessor Eddie Cook and me, I'm Stephen Richard, Maricopa County Recorder. Yes. Well I, when you get the title alert, doesn't that mean the title has already recorded and isn't that too late to do anything about fraud on your home? In some sense, yes. In other senses, no. It's a great question, Denise, and actually Assessor Eddie Cook and I are working on putting in more safety mechanisms at the front. But you are correct that this service is after somebody has already recorded the document. But let me tell you why that's important, because it is much harder to undo if this has been in existence for a lo long time, especially if it's a vacant property or a vacant house that you had property to and somebody's already moved in their stuff or they've conveyed it away to yet another person. That becomes harder for law enforcement to put a stop to, and it becomes harder for more hassle for you and more expense for you. So we recommend that you sign up for Maricopa Title Alert, that you stay on top of this, and if anything happens that looks inappropriate or unlawful, that you immediately contact the Attorney General's office. And the contact information for the Attorney General is on the same page as Maricopa Title Alert, so you can go to Title Alert maricopa.gov and you'll see the contact information for the Attorney General's office. Now I will tell you that this Attorney General and the past Attorney General do care about deed fraud and so this is something that they will respond to if you call in with a situation. I hope it never gets to that so I hope that this is just sort of peace of mind 
but if this does happen, please take action sooner rather than later. All right, and we are going to take our final question. All right, Janet, you are our final caller today. We appreciate you being here. We appreciate you sticking it out to the bitter end, and it looks like you've got a question for Assessor Eddie Cook. I'm sorry, I missed the uh, phone number for the senior exemption. All right, if you want to call our office, this is Assessor uh, Maricopa County Assessor Eddie Cook. Our office number is 602-506-3406. And one of my team members will be glad to help you with any questions that you need help with. All right. Well, thank you very much. I want to thank everyone who tuned into this call. We had over 2,000 people who tuned into this call at one point. And if we did not get to your question, because we were receiving quite a few questions, somebody from one of our teams will call you back. But if you want to do a little more research or if you want to contact my office, you can call us at 602 506 Three five three five again six zero two five zero six three five three five or you can go online to recorder.maricopa.gov and I will say signing off for Stephen Richer Maricopa County Recorder and now I'll turn it over to Assessor Eddie Cook to sign off and give you his contact information. Well, thank you, Stephen. So if you would like to call our office, the Maricopa County Assessor's Office, that's six zero two five zero six. 3406 again 602 506 3406 or you can go to our website at mcassessor.maricopa.gov well Stephen this has been fantastic thank you for sharing our wonderful time with our property owners and sharing the value and the benefits that your office provides and I know we you know and have enjoyed uh, your team uh, working together on sharing an educational series of uh, the benefits of what we provide for property owners. Great. Thank you so much, and thank you to all who listened. Have a great day.